I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, so let's talk about Starling Marte. As you all saw, he suspended for 80 games. And I think what was a major shock uh, in the fantasy baseball world, I don't think anybody expected this to happen. Nobody saw it coming. I know I certainly didn't. And uh, I have Marte in both labor and tout. And he was a uh, cornerstone of my franchise in both of those leagues. And there goes Marte. Uh, for the next 80 games, and I'm sure we'll see him at some point in July. And this is just so disheartening. It really is. It's terrifically disheartening for fantasy owners. Tested positive for, was it Nandrolone? I don't even know what it is. It's a, you know, it's a PED. And when these guys say, well, I unknowingly took it, I don't believe any of that. I don't believe any of that. You tell me the athlete that doesn't know what goes into their body. Think about it this way. Go to your local gym. Go to a guy who works out and say, hey, I've got this supplement. It's going to make you huge. You don't think the first thing he would say is, well, what's in it? I'm sure he will. He'd go, what's in this thing? And you tell him, and then he decides where to take it. Do you think he just goes, oh, great, sure. I'll take that pill. Thanks so much. I didn't know what was in it. And then all of a sudden he turns out to be, you know, get, gets huge. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, whoa, thank you so much. No, it's not unknowingly. It's not unlo- unknowingly at all. It's knowingly, right? So this is a terrible thing that happened to D. Gordon owners last year, to Starling Marte owners this year. D. Gordon's suspension came down, um, was it like the end of April last year. So, I mean, this is terrible. And the worst part is Marte can't even make the postseason if the Pirates make it. He won't be eligible. See, baseball doesn't play. See, football, ah, we'll give you four games, and then if you negotiate it down, maybe we'll give you three. Baseball's like, look, 80 games. Next time it's a year, and then after that, you're out of here. They don't even play. Right? Baseball doesn't even play. Baseball's like your mom who goes, you're grounded for the rest of your life. Right? I'm going to ground you for six months, the next one's the rest of your life. It's not like, you know, your dad's like, ah, you get grounded for a week. That's football, right? Football's grounded for a week. This is your grounded for way more than a week. So Adam Frazier is going to be the everyday outfielder with McCutcheon and Gregory Polanco. So the Pirates' amazing outfield is not so amazing. Austin Meadows is a very good player, but he's not ready yet. And the Pirates certainly, the Pirates were on the, on the were teetering as, are they in, are they out, are they in, are they out? And I think they wanted to be in, but now without Marte, I've got to think that they're playing already for next year. I really do. So why would you rush, rush Austin Meadows up? You absolutely wouldn't. You'd wait on Austin Meadows, bring him up after Super 2, see what happens. Josh Harrison moves probably higher in the order. So you're looking at an order like, Frazier, Harrison, McCutcheon, Polanco, Freeze, because you don't have Jumbo Gum, Josh Bell, Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, and the pitcher? I mean, is that scaring you? It's not scaring me. It's pretty bad. So what do I do with Marte? I leave him. I can't cut him. The only league I would cut Marte in would be in a league where I have like maybe two reserve guys. But if I have anything more than that, I'm absolutely holding him. I'm assuming I'm going to get a half a season of him. Well, half a season of Marte should be, give or take, about seven home runs and 20 stolen bases. Can I use that in the second half? Absolutely. If I'm in a head-to-head league, I'm never trading him because I certainly want to be able to use him in my head-to-head playoffs. I might trade him in a rotisserie league if I thought I was going to be hurt in all the categories. Okay? Now, if I were to trade Marte, I probably would go to the top team in my league. And I'd say, hey, dude, in the top top of my league, here's Marte. 
you give me 85 to 90 cents in the dollar. Maybe this guy goes, I'm so good, I can wait on Marte. So if you really wanted to trade him, that's what I would do. I would try to trade him to an owner who is a very good team who can wait. You're not going to trade him to another stinky team because a stinky team can't wait 80 games, right? But a very good owner who is very shrewd, who has a deep bench, might be able to hook you up. So on the show this morning, would I trade Marte for Abisail Garcia? No. Would I trade him for Jared Dyson? No. These are things that came up this morning on our show. Would I trade him for Ben Zobris? No. I want a decent player for Marte. I want a guy, if Marte's a 10 out of 10, I want a guy who's at least an 8.5 out of 10. I don't want a 7 out of 10. I'd rather wait on Marte. Why? Because I could pick up Adam Frazier and then stick him with Marte at the end of the year and have a better player. So don't be giving away Marte. That's just something you really don't want to do. Okay? I, I know it's hard to hold him. I know you're very upset at him. I absolutely and unequivocally understand that. But you can't be giving him away. If you give him away, it hurts you. Right? And I don't want to hurt you when it comes to your league. I want to help you. So I would hold Marte and play and pu- put him with another Adam Frazier type of player unless I could get a deal. You know, look, somebody wants to give me Polanco for Marte. I'll take that deal right now. I'll take that deal right now. Somebody wants to give me Marcelo Zuna for Marte. Yeah, ah, maybe, maybe. Going to have to be a Zuna or better. Todd Frazier, sure, I'll take it. Jean Segura, sure, I'll take it. Not crazy, but I'm not giving away Marte, and I don't want you to do the same. So a couple of the things in just the world of sports that I, I want to talk about. First of all, Aaron Hernandez killed himself in jail. I don't get this one. I really don't. I mean, I may never understand Aaron Hernandez, and I'm sure people will write doctorate thesis on this guy and how wackadoo he is and how we're a victim of our circumstances and the culture we grew up in. But... Something's troubling me here. He's just found not guilty of two crimes. And he's got this ultimate lawyer, Jose Baez, who's going to try to get him off for this other crime, the first one that he committed. And now he kills himself in jail when things seem to be going at their best for him? That doesn't make a lot of sense. It just doesn't. You know, we were joking. It sounds very much like The Wire, like uh, he had to kill himself. I don't know. Nothing would surprise me with these guys. Would Aaron Hernandez kill himself to save his uh, fiance and his daughter? Absolutely. I truly believe that. I believe that 100%. And maybe that's what happened. Maybe they said, look, dude, you better off yourself. Otherwise, we're going we're gonna to take out the clo- those closest to you. I can see that. But I will remember Aaron Hernandez as the football player. I'm going to do that. I'm going to remember him as the UF Gator, who was a really good tight end. I'm going to remember him as the New England Patriot who was almost indefensible. I mean, this is a guy that you couldn't defend. This is a guy who, with Gronk, was two of the top five tight ends in football. This is a guy that you couldn't game plan against. This was a guy who was just a supreme athlete who I truly enjoyed watching on the field. Was he a train wreck in his real life? Absolutely. Um, Did he do a lot of bad things? I'm sure he did. If he didn't do this, I'm sure he did a couple other things. I I, I fully believe that. But I'm going to look back on Aaron Hernandez in the best way I can. And I'm going to look back on a really talented football player who just went down the wrong path. And I'm going to feel badly about that. I am. Because, you know, to me, at the end of the day, as a sports fan, I, I like to watch great players play sports. And Aaron Hernandez was a great player. And I think that it's a, it's a shame that we won't ever see him on the field again. Right now, I'm also very, very confused. I don't know if you're playing DFS basketball or not. But if you are, man, the Boston Celtics are an unequivocal train wreck at this point. This team is walking out on the court with no life whatsoever. This team looks uh, moribund. They just morose. Dead? Zombie-like? They're chucking up three-pointers from half court? I mean, with nobody under the basket? I know they're playing the Bulls, who have D. Wade and Jimmy Butler, who I could argue are the best two players on the court. I could argue that. I could argue that Rajon Rondo is a really talented player. 
But man, it looks like the Celtics just don't want to be there. And I feel very badly because this team worked so hard all season to get to where they are, only to implode in the playoffs. And, you know, it's very disheartening for me as a sports fan to see that because, man, I I like the Celtics. I love Brad Stevens and I love Isaiah Thomas and I feel very badly about his sister and Avery Bradley and uh, Jay Crowder. But, man, this team has just packed it in and given up. Really has. It's it's kind of pathetic to watch. And uh, it's very sad to see. So hopefully the Celtics can right this ship. If you're playing NBA DFS at this point, I don't know what to tell you. But just be very careful with that. It's not my favorite thing for you to do at this point. Um, it really isn't. Let's take a look at the night in DFS tonight. Um, this is a very, very tough night in fantasy baseball for DFS purposes because you've got Clayton Kershaw and Madison Bumgarner. I would say about 60% of people in DFS are going to own one of these two guys. About 30% will own Kershaw, about the other 30% will own Bumgarner. So 40% of people will be contrarian and they'll go Tanaka or Archer or Koikel or whatever it is. But this is a very difficult night to play. Because you either have to embrace Kershaw or Bob Gardner, or you have to go away from them, right? And going contrarian is never a good life decision when you're going contrarian against two of the best pitchers in the game. So I'm going to give you a strategy now that I'd like you to employ. So I would go with a Kershaw team. I'm going to play three lineups tonight. So assuming you're playing FanDuel, okay? I'm going to have a Kershaw team, I'm going to have a Bumgarner team, and then I'm going to have a Contrarian team. I don't want to be caught with the bag, left holding the bag, if I don't have Kershaw or Bumgarner. That's going to kill me. So I'm going to go with one of those two guys, Kershaw or Bumgarner, and then the third guy, I'm going to go a little bit Contrarian. On DraftKings, I'll probably have Bumgarner and somebody else, Kershaw and somebody else, and I will have a team. I will, of Kershaw and Bumgarner. I'm going to be a little crazy like that because if they both go off, if I can find myself a few hitters who can just get a couple of singles, I don't know, maybe even a home run here or there, I'm going to cash. So this is one of those very tricky nights. I prefer, I way, way prefer to have fifth starters play than the number one starters here like this because the number one starters here can get you in a lot of trouble. Get you in a lot of trouble. Because if you don't have Kershaw, you don't have Bumgarner, you risk, you really do risk getting killed in DFS. But, you know, the best way to avoid getting killed in DFS is joining Scout Fantasy. So on our premium message boards, we have SD Chickens. We have Robbie Garriak. We've got, you know, uh, Fantasy Bum. We've got a lot of guys putting out great information for you uh, to, be, to read every day. You know, uh, I put out my daily Dr. Roto article, which gives you my sneaky snacks, st- sneaky stacks and my chalky stacks and my visionary plays. Uh, my visionary play tonight is Dustin Pedroia. I really like Dustin Pedroia tonight. I don't like Francisco Liriano. Pedroia didn't play yesterday, so he's nice and rested. He usually rakes lefties. He usually rakes Liriano. I think he goes two for four with two RBIs and two runs scored. I will absolutely and unequivocally have a piece of Dustin Pejoya tonight. I don't know what else I'm going to do, but I know he's going to be a part of what I'm going to do. Dustin, I may one-off him because I don't know whether or not I like the entire stack. I do like um, Hanley Ramirez if he plays. I do like Chris Young. They hit lefties very well, but I don't know where they're going to be in the order. I don't love Mookie Betts normally against a lefty. Certainly don't love Mitch Moreland. But uh, I do love Dustin Pedroia. Okay? So I want you to go to scoutfantasy.com. I want you to enter the promo code ROTO. That's R-O-T-O. I want you to pay for one month. I want you to get two more for free. So like I said, you get access to our premium message boards. You get access to all our great information. You get access to our baseball optimizer. Right? which is going through it and giving you the best plays of the day. And a lot of times I like to click on the optimizer and it gives me players I never even thought of. And I'll be like, Joey Gallo? Really? Did you mean Jerry Callow or Joey Gallo? 
But if you mean Joey Gallo, and then all of a sudden I found the next day that Joey Gallo hit a home run. I'm like, oh my God, only the optimizer would have had that. All right, only the optimizer would have had that. So take a look at that. <clears throat> I think you'll really enjoy it. I think it's a very useful tool, and I certainly think that it can help you. All right. So right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. If you have Starling Marte, don't get yourself down. Keep it right here. We're going to be okay. I've got him in two leagues. We will get you through this. We will figure out a way for you to still win your leagues without Starling Marte. So don't worry about it. All right, guys. Have a great day. Be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!